Hello, everybody, and welcome to Fit Chicks Chat. My name is Laura Jackson. And I'm Amanda Quinn. And we are here today for our weekly recap, which we love because we get to reconnect. And we also get to talk again about the awesome subject that we talked about this week. So this week... Our September slim down. We are talking about <laughs> our September slim down. So I know for a lot of you listening and a lot of you watching, you are still in the like back to school mode transition, especially if you have kids. I mean, it's hilarious seeing things that are popping up even from our friends of how they're kind of battling this transition. They're like, two days of making lunch, that's enough. <laughs> but um, No, totally. No, hold on, I got a chat open here. I'm just going to close that. But, um, but yeah, so this, this week on the podcast, it was Amanda and I, we were talking about our top three nutrition strategies for a September slowdown. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about how it doesn't need to be difficult. It just needs to be, you just need to make Do a it. few small changes. <laughs> well, yeah, even a few small nutrition changes and they can have huge results, not only on weight loss, but also on your energy levels and your skin, your sleep on so much more. Mm -hmm. So those three strategies, if you have not listened to the podcast, please do. The link is below this video. Um, but just to give you a quick little recap on it, we talked, the first one was we were talking about how one of the best ways to actually reduce hunger, to um, balance blood sugar, to make sure you're getting in enough nutrients, which makes you crave less food, is to get two servings of vegetables in at each meal. Yes. And I know that once we kind of put that out there, I was getting a lot of questions. I actually have one that's open on my screen. Um, and it was from Sarah, who's from Vancouver. And she was saying, okay, I love the idea of getting two vegetables in every day. I do a smoothie in the morning already, but I'm trying to think of different ideas to make sure that I get in these two servings um, in my other two meals and snacks. Any ideas mm -hmm. for recipes? So I thought that would be a really cool thing for us to kind of recap on because we both follow this principle. So how do you get two servings of veggies in? Oh goodness. I hope I don't have to talk recipes because I don't have, I'm not like <laughs> a, I'm, I'm not, I'm like a simple, a simple kind of girl. I follow no, I like. That's, I think yeah. that's great though, because I think most people, including myself, I don't have time to be making a fancy green bean casserole or whatever, you know what I mean? Like I want simple <laughs> like things. Green bean casserole. Yeah. Yeah. Like who needs it? But I yeah. want to eat simple things that are going to be, you know, I can grab and go, I can meal prep in advance that are gonna make sure that I stick to my goals. Yeah. Well, so, so my way to make sure that I have veggies, like at least two servings of veggies, I probably even have more than two per meal because I eat a lot of veggies. Um, my thing is I incorporate them as much as possible, like in any kind of like, and I think I, I talked about this in podcasts, so like in sauces or anything like that. So if I'm making a spaghetti sauce, I put every vegetable under the sun in there. If I'm making, I have like a, um, a slight addiction right now to making muffins, but like healthy muffins, like oil-free, gluten-free, free all these like crazy like amazing muffins but i make them with zucchini and it, even if it calls for like one cup of zucchini i make it like a heaping mound of zucchini and then <laughs> i basically just like i use zucchini so they're pretty much like almost like zucchini frittatas <laughs> they're not even necessarily like muffins but i make sure that i add so much more so if it's like one cup i'll maybe add two to three cups you know what i mean like i add more vegetables into my recipes so that because for me, I'm like, mm, it's still going to taste just great. And now I'm going to get more fiber, more veggies. Um, same thing too, is that I always prepare veggies in my fridge. So I always have like mm -hmm. carrot sticks. I have broccoli cut up. I have cauliflower cut up because I like just eating raw veggies as like a quick snack, but that's not enough sometimes to satisfy me, right? Like I can't just eat like some raw veggies and dip because that won't satisfy me completely. So I usually have that with like, I don't know, maybe a piece of cheese or something like that. Like I always have like a little bit of protein with it, but I always have the veggies as, as the main, the main focus. And one of, oh, one of my obsessions right now is edamame. Mm -hmm. I am like, on it like every snack that's like my appetizer <laughs> before dinner like i literally make edamame almost daily right now and i just i can't stop eating it it is so good like it's it's I just so delicious too. and it's such like and it's such an easy healthy snack to have because it takes literally three minutes to make it and 
you're eating tons of veggies because you don't even like pay attention. You just eat them and eat them and eat them. And they're like low calorie and super good for you. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. I love edamame too. The only thing with edamame is they are a legume. So, so they're not necessarily a vegetable. Yeah. <clears throat> so some people, <laughs> as I joke, <clears throat> do end up having a bit of a reaction to them. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Sorry. I'm joking. Oh, now. are you okay? However, yes, I'm okay. Okay. But they are still, obviously, if you're eating all natural veg, um, bean or legume, it's still better than eating processed and packaged things. You're still getting, yeah, the protein, the fiber, yeah, all that stuff. But we talked a lot on the podcast about getting the low glycemic veggies in, which those are all, again, our leafy greens, our cauliflower, broccoli, asparagus, zucchini, eggplant, um, onions, tomatoes, and... Like Sarah, her question, she was already saying that, yes, she's doing the green smoothie in the morning, which is yeah. the easiest way for anyone who is wanting to get vegetables in. Usually breakfast is the hardest thing. So a smoothie, and I know for myself, the last thing I want to be doing in the morning, I'm not even already a breakfast person. I love breakfast foods, but I break See, my I don't. fast. Yeah, yeah. Like I love breakfast foods, but like at dinner time and stuff. But I break my fast later on in the day. Yeah. That's a whole other different podcast. But... um but the last thing I want to be doing is chewing on, you know, spinach and things like that. So I find a smoothie any time of the day, actually, if I feel like I don't feel like eating vegetables, it's a really great way to get them in because you obviously can sweeten them up with protein powder or fruit mm-hmm. and things like that. Um, and also if you don't have time, because sometimes like it's like time is of the essence and you're kind of like, oh my gosh, I'm in a hurry. It's like, it's the best fast food possible because you're like, okay, completely. I can get my veggies in, I can get my fiber in, I can get my protein in and it, I can make it in literally my, my blender makes it in a minute and a half. So yeah. within two and a half minutes, I've got a healthy smoothie ready to go, put it in a to-go cup and I'm out. Like if I'm on my way to a meeting or whatever. Completely. And that's one of the things is I love about this season too is in addition to doing the smoothies, now people, you're going to be craving more of the soups because it's getting mm. cooler, right? And soup is essentially a warm smoothie you can make it into. So you can either do a blended smoothie, that is, you know, a blended cauliflower soup is delicious and yeah. you're getting in all those nutrients and fiber. Um, but you can also do a chunkier soup, like a veggie stew, and like you do with your spaghetti sauce, just chuck those all in. Yeah. And the thing with the back to school, obviously with time consuming, you can make those in advance and then have them for lunch and dinner. Or like if you're working late, you have them for the family and things like that. So mm-hmm. to answer Sarah's question, love the smoothies for any time of day. Also adding in soups for lunch. Chilies are great too, because again, you can bulk them up, adding, serve it over top of spinach. Mm-hmm. Um, I also do a lot of spaghetti sauces and I use my spiralizer and make zucchini noodles. Yeah. And that's something too, again, it's such an easy way to add more vegetables in and it takes two seconds to literally make. And you can, again, spiralize them in advance, keep them, all you have to do is dump them in water for 10 seconds to get them hot. You don't want to do it too long because if you need so soft, it'll just turn to like yeah mush. <laughs> oh, and they get like slimy. Like they're not good if they're like too, no. yeah. I like, I don't like putting them in water. I actually like to pan sear mine. I pan sear it for like a minute. Yeah. Or if you so have an good. air fryer, they're delicious in the air fryer as well. I haven't tried that yet. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Air fryer <laughs> is like my favorite. Well, I have the of- air fryer. I just have never tried zucchini noodles Oh, it's in my it. favorite piece of kitchen equipment. So if you have a spiralizer, you can do zucchini noodles. You can do yellow squash noodles. You can do um, butternut squash. Like there's so many vegetables that you can do with that. Mm-hmm. And then another thing that I love to do is, of course, wraps. So I pack my filling separately if I'm doing sandwiches. Again, meal prep, meal prep. When it comes to any veggies, meal prep is key. But yeah, because there's me- nothing worse than when you're like super hungry and you're like, oh no, I have to spend like 20 minutes cutting all my veggies and like peeling my carrots or like all that totally. kind of stuff or whatever, like washing everything up. It's it's like, it now beca- makes a dinner meal that should take half an hour and now takes it like an hour with all the prepping. And yeah. like, you're like, oh my gosh, maybe I'll just have a frozen pizza or whatever. Like it's so much easier to like give into like a temptation when you know that like the timeline is going to be longer because you didn't prep. Completely. And the thing too is like, it's been proven that we get decision fatigue. Mm -hmm. So when you have to think at every single meal, (laughs) what am I going to eat today? In addition to thinking, oh my gosh, I have to do this for work. I have to do this for the family. I've got to get my workouts in, blah, blah, blah. 
that's why it's like you have you have to plan in advance for things and the more decisions you take off your plate or you make an advance so for example on sunday when you meal prep you're like hey i'm doing this for the week mm-hmm. i'm gonna do smoothies every day for breakfast i'm doing soup every day for lunch and i'm making this this is for dinner yeah then you literally that that thought now that's checked on the list and it's now you're just an autopilot and you just have to do it or it's mm-hmm. like you have prepped and you just have to eat it exactly it'll take a huge amount of stress off your plate especially if you're trying to eat healthy yeah so yeah i love wraps like i do collard greens even if you just steam them like like the big leafy collard greens steam them and then keep them cool and then you pack your filling for your sandwich whatever if you're doing tuna or eggs or tofu or whatever keep that separately and then you just stuff it before you eat it you can do lettuce wraps you can do nori wraps like seaweed um so those are some of my favorites for lunch and then same thing for like dinner, what we were talking about doing the sauces, doing things that you can serve over stuff. Cauliflower rice is one of my favorite. Like there's so many creative things you can do now with the veggies. But like you were saying, if you make the veggies the focus of the meal, as opposed to being like, okay, I'm having chicken tonight. What am I having with the chicken? Yeah. If you try to flip the script in your brain, you're like, hey, I'm having cauliflower tonight. What I'm going to eat with this cauliflower. Mm-hmm. Then you start to really pay more attention to the veggie intake. Definitely. We love veggies. So what would you do for any type of, because we talked about, that was one of the things. So we did talk about, you know, getting in the two servings of veggies with each meal. If you want to understand the full reason why you have to do that, it's not just for you should eat more vegetables. Listen (laughs) to the podcast. We get into a little bit more of the science of what's happening in your body and how you're going to fully manage cravings um mood swings mood swings you're really managing so much by just getting two servings of veggies and meals so listen to the podcast blood sugar all that yeah the other thing we talked about was getting a, doing a lower carb breakfast uh-huh so what do you do for breakfast other than i know you mentioned before you do smoothies so i do do smoothies and remember i decided that i was going to challenge myself for a week to take out my bananas because i love bananas and i can't help myself <laughs> it's Delicious. like I know. And I love them so much. And you know, it's funny is, um, after we talked last time and we decided that I was going to do this challenge right before that I had done my groceries on the weekend and I had bought literally like three bunches of bananas. Cause I had like so many bananas cause I like to peel them all, put them in um, a container and then freeze them. Right. Yeah. So now in my freezer, I have literally like 20 bananas in a big package. <laughs> um, but it's interesting because I love the taste of them. I love everything about them. But for my smoothies, I took them out of it and I don't even really miss it because I drink my smoothie. Like yeah. it sounds bad, but I drink it so fast because it's like, it's just my breakfast. I just down it. And then like, I usually go do my workout. Yeah, so it's like kind of milkshake. like, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of like, I get it done so fast that I didn't even really notice that I'm not having them anymore. So now I've actually dropped my carb intake in the mornings because now I'm not having bananas in the morning. So my smoothies are really just, you know, there's frozen kale. There's unsweetened almond milk. Did you there's... put in the avocado? Um, I haven't done the avocado yet. No, because mm-hmm. I want to buy the frozen one because I find with avocados, with fresh ones, I generally use them always for my daughter. Like we mash yeah. it up and eat it for dinners and stuff. And so I never have enough. And then I also find them so tricky because it's like, as soon as you like cut one in half, you're like, I always feel the pressure to eat it all at once. Even though I know you can like put lemon juice on it. I always feel like stressed about it. So I want to just buy the frozen one. So I'm going to buy them. But even if you do cut them up and put them in parchment paper in the freezer, then you can use them again. So for anyone who's just listening now, again, listen to the podcast, but Amanda and I were talking about how replacing the smoothie in the morning at breakfast to reduce your sugar intake, you still want that creaminess in your smoothie right? Because like bananas make it creamy and delicious. What you can do to lower the sugars, but to increase the fiber and keep that creaminess is to swap out your banana for avocado. And then you're also going to get your healthier fats, which having in the morning is going to keep you fuller longer. And then having your carbs later on in the afternoon around your workouts more, again, you're, you're really going to see a difference or, well, I shouldn't say you are, you may because everyone's body is completely different. Yeah. But I know for a lot of my clients and for myself, I've seen a huge difference by focusing my breakfast time around more of the healthy fats, the protein and the low glycemic vegetables. And then later in the day, having more of the starchier carbs around my workout time. So they're, they're used more effectively. Mm-hmm. 
But yeah, no, I haven't tried the avocado yet, but I am going to. So I'll let you know. Yeah. I'll let you know next week how it goes. <laughs> I'm excited. Yeah, the other thing I'm excited I to think- try. I just try to only go to the grocery store once a week. So I'm like, that's kind of like my goal is like, yeah. I buy, well, I usually end up going twice a week, but I usually just buy like my big haul on Sunday and then I do my meal prepping. And then the week in between the week is just to go buy more like veggies, essentially like more salad. <laughs> love veggies sometimes mm. i do get sick of like eating them so that's when i love doing the soups and i love like when it's just like drinking them. oh gosh yeah it's so delicious mm-hmm. and the last thing we got we did talk about was about the fiber so mm-hmm. i wanted to ask you like what is your what is your kind of go-to for fiber like what I do would... you what do you do in terms of like snacking or I would say, honestly, it's just all the vegetables that I have in my diet and like the fruits, like I don't eat a ton of fruit, but, um, I do eat some fruits, you know what I mean? But that, I would say that that's really it. Like I don't have any artificial, I guess, if you, if you want to say artificial sort of forms of fiber, like I don't eat like fiber cereals and I don't have like fiber one bars or like anything like that. Like I don't have any of those kinds of things added to my diet. So really it's more just about like eating real food. And because I eat so many vegetables throughout my day, I know that my fiber intake is high. That's like kind of my strategy. It's not, it's not very like, <laughs> it's not very scientific. It's, it's just like no. very straightforward. Like I try to eat healthy and I know that that's kind of fulfilling sort of the requirements for my day. Well, and when you're getting in that, if you're focusing on that first, you know, tip or that first strategy of getting the two servings of veggies, yeah. you're pretty much going to get the, your fiber intake for the day. Yeah. Another thing I really like to do too, in addition to the veggies though, is doing the flaxseed. So flaxseed also, because Mm -hmm. it is a healthy fat, you have to make sure as well it's ground. You can't use the full seed because our bodies can't break it down. We will poop it out um, and you won't get the benefits. So if you have the ground flaxseed that you grind yourself, we don't want to buy the pre-ground. Because then it loses its effectiveness, right? Yeah. Well, it's a it's a very delicate fat, so it's and it's, so it's very sensitive to heat, light, and air. Oh, it beca- it becomes rancid. rancid. You know how I love the rancid fats. Mm. So <laughs> I love you, when we talk about rancid fat. <laughs> yeah, as soon as you like, as soon as you crush that up, you're exposing that to air. You're exposing it to light. You're exposing it to heat. Yeah. So the best thing to do is actually just buy the seeds whole. I have a seven dollar coffee grinder, and I just grind it right before I use it. And then if you do grind a little bit more, keep it in the fridge in a dark container. But the thing is that flax seeds also contain lignans, which is, um, it's really important for hormonal balance for women. So there's mm-hmm. been a ton of studies that show, and we actually have an upcoming podcast with um, Dr. Cheryl Allen, who's a naturopath that I work with, um, who she's incredible. She's talking about hormonal balance. And just even by simply adding two tablespoons of flax seed, which also has a ton of healthy fat and a ton of fiber, um, that it really helps to balance out your estrogen levels. So, and mm, most women now we cool. are dealing with a lot of hormonal imbalances. So it's just such a simple thing, again, that you can just really add in a ton of nutrition and it's super simple and mm-hmm. you'll be getting your fiber. Perfect. It's like a super like trifecta win. <laughs> exactly. And flaxseed, you can put it like on your yogurt, you can put it on your salad. I even sprinkle chia seeds too on my salad. Like. Just as long as you eat it right away, if not, you know, chia seeds. Oh, the chia seeds, yeah. Bubble tea jelly balls. Oh my gosh, I, I can't them. even. I can't even. I, I used that. to put them in my smoothie, and then I would sometimes have to leave my smoothie because, like, Maddie would need me or something, and then be sitting on the counter for a bit, and then I just like go to reblend it, and it's all like just like, like so like thick. Jello. I'm like, uh, like I can't. <laughs> like I just, I absolutely cannot do it. So, chia seeds just they just don't do it for me. <laughs> I always well, have to take a hard pass on them. You can go with the flat seed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that was kind of our recap for today. So we just kind of touched on some additional tips. So Sarah, I hope that answered your question. I hope that gave you some ideas for some additional ways to use those nutrition strategies later in the day, other than just with your smoothie for some recipes mm-hmm. and snacks. Um, and also for anyone listening out there, again, make sure link is below this video to rewatch that podcast. And as well, if you are interested, we have a lot of exciting stuff coming up at FitChix. We actually have a eight week challenge that is coming up. Um, so if you're interested in getting super fit and fierce with us from home, um, it's going to be at fitchicks.ca forward slash challenge. 
as well as we have our Fitchex Academy programs coming up if you're looking to get certified fitness, nutrition, wellness, and business. Um, so check out fitchexacademy.com for all of our upcoming dates in September and yeah. October. I know, I'm excited. Like, I'm so excited to have a new crop of amazing holistic fitness professionals. I know. It's so, it's like, I love it. I love every single semester, the beginning. I get like those butterflies leading up to it. So fun. Okay. Awesome. So until then, of course, you can hit us up on um, Facebook at FitChix Academy Programs. Mm -hmm. And um, we're also online at FitChix on Instagram and Twitter. So we All can right. talk to you soon. Okay. Bye, everyone. Bye.